And you talk about OJ in the book, even though you didn't represent OJ. How, how important was Which a lot of people don't know that you didn't. Yes, well, it seemed like everyone else did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say right now, I did not represent. How did you miss that one, by I the way? Did, I was in trial <laughs> across the hallway at the time. Oh right, you, you had enough going on. Right, you had enough going on. But I mean, first of all, how do you make sense of the OJ trial? Let me start there. As far I as think both juries got it right. I, and, all, and you remember, there was a criminal trial and a civil trial. Right. The criminal case, how often, as and do you see in the criminal justice system, the lead detective actually committing perjury in the trial, yeah. um, and the jury knows about it. Yeah. Then fast That's forward fair. to the civil case. Civil case is not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's a preponderance of the evidence. Um, so 51 to 49. 51-49 wins. So um, I, in, in a criminal case, 51-40, you can have 85-15 prosecution, you lose. Right. But civil case also, he doesn't have the protection of the Fifth Amendment, so he had to testify. Right. They ended up catching him in a couple of material falsehoods, what we would call lies. Yeah. And that, then the jury is instructed there, the civil jury, you know, you can disbelieve this witness's testimony if you proved him a liar. So I think they did what they were supposed so to. So in simple words, did O.J. do it? Yeah, I think he probably did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, I think so too. Beyond a reasonable doubt, no, but clearly I think the preponderance, yeah. O.J. walks into your office, you think he killed these two people, do you represent him anyway? Yes, I think you, I think any lawyer who doesn't, for some reason, like it's an unpopular client, or, or it's you an unpopular, two or you killed two people, you can't, that's, no. As a lawyer, you've got an absolute duty.